Hello. If you see me bouncing around, it's because I'm recording this on a cruise ship in the Tasman Sea between Australia and New Zealand. The ocean bottom where I am is five kilometers below the surface. This is relevant because my talk is about Blue Earth Bathymetry, a generalized worldwide data set of the ocean bottom created with Adobe Photoshop and Geographic Imager. It is intended for small-scale mapping. And with that said, let's dive into how I made it. Blue Earth bathymetry derives from GEBCO data at 15 arc second resolution with a spatial resolution of 450 meters. At the original size, the entire world is a whopping 86,400 pixels wide. Let's take a closer look at GEBCO by zooming into the so-called Bermuda Triangle. When zoomed in, we can see that GEBCO is very messy. I call it Frankenstein data because it's composited from hundreds of bathymetric surveys conducted over many decades. The linear artifacts that you see represent individual surveys that have been stitched together. Despite these artifacts, it is an amazing product concerning how difficult it is to map the ocean bottom because of the thick layer of water that impedes sunlight and other forms of electromagnetic radiation from reaching the bottom. Uh, ironically, better elevation data is available for Mars millions of kilometers away from Earth compared to the seafloor only a few kilometers below the surface. GEMCO consists of two main types of data. Multi-beam son sonar is the most detailed and accurate. These data are collected in narrow swaths by ships towing sonar equipment. Data collection is very slow. Presently, only 25% of the world's ocean floor is now mapped with multi-beam sonar. Most of it is in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, near the United States, Europe, and Japan. The remaining 75% uh, of the world's ocean, uh, mostly in the Southern Hemisphere and remote ocean areas, is mapped only with satellite altimetry. Instruments on satellites can precisely measure the height of the ocean surface, compensating for waves and tides to coarsely map the ocean bottom at five kilometer resolution. At this coarse resolution, many smaller features are missed. For example, a 2023 study by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography has detected 19,000 previously unknown seamounts. Getting back to the main story, let's start cleaning up the GEBCO data to create Blue Earth bathymetry. First, I generalize GEBCO by downsampling it from 15 to 60 arc second. The width in the entire worldwide data set went from 86,400 pixels to 21,600 pixels. I also applied the uh, reduce noise filter in Photoshop. This eliminated all but the largest artifacts. For the final step, I used a soft brush in Photoshop to manually remove the remaining artifacts. But there was a major problem. So far, I've been showing you edits to shade reliefs created from the GEBCO data. But what I needed to do is remove the artifacts from the original GEBCO data, which looks like this when imported into Photoshop as a 16-bit GeoTIFF DEM via Geographic Imager. In the raw data, the artifacts are not visible, which made manual editing impossible to do. My solution was to do the manual editing on proxy shader relief images where I could easily see the artifacts. In Photoshop, I created two layers. The top layer was a shader relief with artifacts, and the bottom layer was a blurred shader relief that disguised the artifacts. They were smoothed over. I then created a layer mask on the top layer upon which I drew the edits with a soft brush, seen here in black. This allowed the blurred shader relief below to show through on the top relief wherever I drew, lessening the visual impact of the artifacts. Then I created another Photoshop file with the original bathymetry dem on the top layer and a blurred version of it on the bottom. These DEMs were the same size as the shader reliefs. I then copied and pasted the layer mask from the shader relief file into the bathymetry DEM file. Finally, I flattened the bathymetry DEM file and saved it as a GeoTIFF DEM with Geographic Imager, thus creating Blue Earth bathymetry. These are my manual edits on the layer mask. I concentrated on the flat abysmal, abys abyssal planes where the artifacts are most noticeable. 
little editing was done on the more complex fracture zones associated with the mid-ocean ridges. You will notice that some of my edits are gray instead of black. In these cases, I was unsure if I was seeing uh, artifacts on the ocean bottom or if it was a feature, so I diminished them partially, kind of split the difference. This is the uh, seafloor shown in profile. A note of caution. The generalization that I applied to blue earth bathymetry generalizes the ocean bottom by shaving it off just a little bit. The highest sea mounts aren't as high and the deepest trenches aren't as low. Consequently, I do not recommend using blue earth bathymetry for creating isobaths. However, blue earth bathymetry is ideally suited for general ocean floor mapping at small scales, such as this map of the North Atlantic. Let's take a closer look. Here's detail of the North Atlantic map. The ocean bottom is rendered as a plan oblique relief. With blue earth bathymetry, you can produce smooth depictions of the ocean bottom without the noisy artifacts. Creating this data set was only possible thanks to the combination of tools that I used, Adobe Photoshop and Avenza Geographic Imager. You can download blue earth bathymetry for free at the link shown here. With Geographic Imager, you can use the advanced import feature to import the data into Photoshop and then render shaded reliefs and hypsometric tints of the ocean bottom. I hope that you find the data set useful. Thanks for your attention.